Well, hello again. Uh, Richard again from Love Brewing um, and Wineworks. Just to talk to you now about the preparation stage of the fruit. I'm assuming that most of us are going to be doing cider of some sort or apple juice. So we're going to talk about the apples and pears first. When, we, uh, when we've got our apples and we need to sort them out, we need to put them into a pulp first. If you can imagine an apple being really quite hard, it will not just go into a press and we can squeeze down onto that apple because it's too hard. So we've got to pulp it first to try and get it into a state that allows it to go into the press. And when it's in the press, we can then squeeze the juice out of it. So what we need to do is uh, a choice of three things. The first option is we take a nice wooden block, about four inches by four inches, reasonable length, cut the apples up, throw them into a metal basket or a bucket of some sort, and then literally pulp the apples with the wooden block. Second option is we use something called a pulp master. Now we've sold quite a few of these over the years, and they will do the job. I've got to say, it is hard work using a pulp master, but if you've got an option of buying a press and a crusher and going for a press that is perhaps more expensive than you really budgeted for, always do that as an option and take a pulp master. The pulp master and bucket's only about 25 quid, so it's the sort of thing that if you enjoy doing the fruit and you enjoy cider making, you can always upgrade at a later stage to a crusher. The pulp master is quite simple. All we would do is we'd take our apples, we'd cut them into quarters and throw them into the bucket. The lid has the spindle going through it with the cutting blade on and that attaches to a drill. So we've got our fruit in there, put the lid on, hold the lid in position and we just literally go up and down, up and down, up and down until we've pulled the apples. We're looking for a consistency on the apples that is furry. We don't want slime. Slime is no good, so things like blenders and liquidizers tend to be too vicious. So we're looking for a consistency that's furry, that will allow the press to do its work. So with the pulp master, we'd go up and down with the pulp master. Obviously, it's not gonna get into all the corners, so we just need to mix the fruit again, mix the apples, put it back on, and give it another burst you'll get to know what the consistency is for the fruit. I can't really give you a guideline here other than to say, when it goes in the press, you should be able to get juice out of it. If you're not getting juice out of your press, it's probably because you haven't pulped it properly. So option two is the pulp master. Uh, option three, which is obviously when we're starting to get a little bit more serious, is the proper crushes that we see behind us. Now, if we're doing soft fruit, as I mentioned before, not quite so important that we pulp it. If obviously we're doing grapes, then yes, the grapes do need to be pulped a little. Now, if we are doing a wine from grapes, then the crusher that we would recommend is this large red one here. This crusher here, as you can see, has got two flat milled wheels, so that when the uh, grapes go in there, they'll press them, and obviously we'll get lots of lovely juice out of it. Um, this one is a painted model and is not really suitable for doing apples. A, because the crushing part is slightly different, and B, because the acidity of the apples will eat into this paint and this will need some heavy maintenance on a regular basis. So we wouldn't recommend this particular one. As you can see, this is the larger one. We do one which is slightly smaller, but it will take a reasonable amount of grape in there and obviously press, uh, sorry, crush your grapes nicely. If we're doing apples and we're looking at crushers, our most popular crusher is the small stainless steel. This model here. As you can see, inside we've got some serious cogs. They would take your finger off, so be very, very careful. They're all in stainless, so again, they're guaranteed for two years. The basket is all in stainless as well, so we don't get a problem with oxidisation and the paint being eaten into. This particular uh, baby is about £200 and it comes complete with its wheel. As you can see as the wheel's turning, 
the, the fruit will be crushed. You can put your apples in here, either halved or whole, if they're small ones. This particular crusher, the small stainless steel crusher, is perfectly big enough for the majority of households. This will press or will crush enough fruit to fill a 45 litre press in about three or four minutes. So if you've got an 11 litre or you've got a 20 litre or a 30 litre crusher, this, uh, sorry press, this is absolutely perfect for what you're wanting to do. So don't even think about going for a bigger size. <coughs> if we're actually then looking at the next size up, which is the medium crusher, this one is slightly different because it's got some cutting blades on it to cut the fruit. So <clears throat> this one is great for doing apples, but it's also very good for doing soft fruit as well. So if the bulk of your product is soft fruit, then I would recommend this particular one. Again, all in stainless steel. Now both these two crushers that we've got here are available in a motorised version. And here, we've got the stainless steel motorised medium crusher. And as you can see, we've got the extension pieces here because it really will zip through the fruit. It, it's just like a fabulous piece of kit. If you get a chance, have a look on the video because we've used the motorised when we were on the Paul Grady show um, last year. And they were having a cider fun time uh, down in London and we supplied them with all the equipment that they needed. So they were using a motorised crusher there, you'll be able to see what it's like. Um, these are all EU approved and obviously the motors and everything are all fully guaranteed. The only thing that you will need to do is to change the plug because it actually comes with a continental fitting. Um, so if you just put a normal plug on it, that's fine. So those are the two crushers. They will, as I say, they'll whip through the work, start a motor at this end, on off button. The final thing that we have is the muncher. And this is the muncher. Literally, throw in the apples whole in the top and it spits them out. And you've got pulped apples ready to go in your press. This one is really semi commercial. Um, I've got a friend of mine who's got a, a place up in um, uh, just outside York and he uses this. He's got uh, about five acres of uh, trees, apple trees, and he's producing cider commercially, and he thinks it's the absolute bee's knees. One thing that I would say about it is inside, and the reason it is so expensive, is the whole of the inside part, and the mechanism here, is all in stainless steel. So again, anything that's coming into contact with the fruit is protected from, from um, corrosion. Some people use, uh, have been known to use, a cheap shredder. Be very, very careful when using those because the acidity of the apples will just eat into the working parts of it and you're likely to end up causing an enormous explosion. We need to pulp the fruit before we put it into the press with three options. With the wooden block, which is hard work, with the pulp master, which goes on the end of the drill, and finally we've got the proper crushes. As I say, this is our most popular crusher, the small stainless steel, and it really does the job, and we'll sort out all your apples and put them in a lovely pulp state, and we'll demo that later.